Hello again Year 8 and welcome to Lesson 6 of Acids and Alkalis. So what will you need today? You'll need a pen, ideally blue or black, for filling in your booklet. You'll need a pen in any other colour so you can show where you've marked work or made corrections. And you might need something to colour in with, some colouring pencils, crayons or felt tip pens. Okay, if you need to get any of this, pause the video while you do that. Oh, before that, actually, you're also going to need some scissors and glue. And when we get to that, if you don't have access to scissors and glue, you can draw in the diagrams that are going to be cut and stuck instead. So pause the video if you need to get anything. So today's lesson objectives. You're going to define the term neutralisation. Explain the steps of a neutralisation reaction and determine the products of different neutralisation reactions. So to start, we need your spider diagram out. You're going to add a branch for lesson five. And then you're going to add three different branches of bits of information you remember from lesson five. Remember to try and do this from memory as a form of retrieval practice. And if you do need to look up stuff to get free, make sure you use a different coloured pen so you can see where you've needed to do that. So pause the video while you do this now. Okay, hopefully you've updated your spider diagrams now, so we'll move on. So in your booklets, you have this page, but without the colour. So what you should do is colour in what an acid with universal indicator, we're going to sort of pink red, we're going to the strong end here, so red, an alkali, pH greater than seven, so we're going for purple, nice and strong here, and then you're going to pour the two together and draw in green, so colour this in if you can, or write the colours so that, to make it obvious. Okay, so you've got these questions in your booklet, so in place of this coloured in beaker here, I've got a test tube with the colour in. And it's green. I've also put our pH scale at the top to help you have a go at this. So pause the video and have a go at these three questions. See if you can work out what this process is called. If you've been listening closely to get to the lesson objectives, you should be able to do it. Okay, hopefully you fill this in. So if you make any corrections as we go through, remember it's in a different coloured pen. So what pH is this solution? It's seven. It's green, so it should be seven. We call this neutral. And the process is called neutralisation, making something neutral. So neutralisation is the process of combining an acid and an alkali to get a neutral solution. To help you remember, it may help to think that the isation part of neutralisation means making. So neutralisation can be thought of as making something neutral. And we have word equation, a general word equation for all neutralisation reactions. So I'm going to go through this with you. Take an acid and mix it with an alkali. Acid plus alkali will give you water and salt. Now this doesn't always mean table salt, sodium chloride, but a salt in chemical terms. We'll learn more about different types of salts as we go through. So make sure you have this filled in. So today's fun fact zone is about this gentleman here with his wonderful moustache. Now neutralisation reactions have been known for a long time, as far back as the ancients, but they've not been understood. By the ancients, I mean ancient Romans and Greeks, to even Egyptians. It wasn't until 1884 that an actual theory of neutralisation was published. So that is very recent if you consider how long ago the ancients were. This theory was published by Zvante Arrhenius, a Swedish chemist and physicist. Now He was quite an interesting individual. In 1900, he began working on setting up the Nobel Institutes and Nobel Prizes. He didn't do this alone, he did it with a group of colleagues. But he remained on the judging committee for 
for the Nobel Prize in Physics until he died. Now, some say he used that opportunity to give some of his friends the Nobel Prizes back then. But they did have to do some amazing work to be able to be nominated. In 1903, he became the first Swede, so Swedish person, to receive the Nobel Prize in Chemistry. But it was not for his work on acids and alkalis. It was for something else. If you're interested, if you look it up on Google, it will tell you what it was for. OK, so what are we going to do today? First, I'm going to show you an example of a neutralisation reaction. And then we're going to go on to this bit. So here we've got acids and alkalis mixing. Neutral solution, alkali being poured in, acid being poured in. Stirred, we've had more alkali poured in, so it's gone blue. So if we had a bit more acid, lots of mixing here. Still a bit blue, so we should add a bit more acid. I'm trying to get it to go back to green, neutral. This time we've gone too far the other way, we've gone to an acid. So we need to add a bit more of our alkali. Again, this time we've gone too far towards alkali, so a bit more acid needs to be added. Oh, we're starting to get the green now. There we go. So when you get the right mix of acid and alkali, you can get the nice green. Oh, we've gone too far again into yellow. But you can see you almost had the green there. But mixing acids and alkalis, you can change the strength of the acid or the alkali or turn it neutral. So that's just an example for you to see. Now, what you're going to do is you are going to watch the video of a neutralization reaction. And as you saw on my word equation before, we also get a salt when we neutralize. So we're going to extract that salt. But if you remember, we had universal indicator to see if it's an acid, alkali, or neutral. So we're going to need to remove that so that it doesn't taint our salt, doesn't contaminate our salt. So the experiment's going to involve that as well. So what you're going to do is at the back of your booklet, you've got this handout. You're going to cut out the different steps to stick in, in your boxes. If you don't have scissors and glue, just draw them instead. As you, Once you've stuck them in, you're going to fill in what's happening, so a method, and why. Explain what is happening at each step and make sure you fully label each diagram. OK, so I'm going to pause this bit and get the video up. Pause it as you need to to fill in each step. Or you may want to watch it all through and then go back and pause and do it. OK, so we're starting with some hydrochloric acid. Just being carefully measured out here. Remember, you would need to wear safety goggles with this because we're handling acids and alkalis. I'm going to add some universal indicator so we can see the pH at any given moment. I'm going to slowly start adding sodium hydroxide and every so often we're going to swirl it make sure it's mixing it's very important we can keep adding it in small amounts so that we don't overshoot so you can see now we've moved to using droplets to try and make sure we keep it care we're careful we don't go past neutral. I've 
just skipped ahead a bit now because it does take quite a while. When you do get close, one drop can make all the difference, which see there, two drops, and we've gone there to neutral. Now, it looks very dark here because a lot of universal indicator was added and of the lighting on the video, but it is green. So now we're going to add activated charcoal. What that will do is it will bind to the universal indicator and take it out of the solution. So we're removing the universal indicator. So by the time we're finished, we'll be looking to get a colourless liquid. We're going to heat the solution or mixture over a Bunsen burner. And occasionally stir. Make sure it is mixing nicely. Now this takes a long time, so I've skipped ahead a bit. Now you need to get it up to boiling. So that's where it's bubbling. But you don't want it to be uncontrolled because then it will boil over, make a mess and pose a risk and hazard. So like this, this is not what you want. So instead, we're going to show you now what it should look like when boiling safely or controlled. So watching closely, you can start to see bubbles forming as it starts to reach boiling. And as soon as you see it properly bu bubbling, remove the heat and the heat within the liquid will keep it boiling slightly. And give it a good stir. So you want to make sure everything's mixing so we get all the universal indicator. So next, we need to remove the activated charcoal with the universal indicator bound to it. So we're going to filter the solution. So I've shown you here how you fold your filter paper. And when you pour this, you're going to want to pour over the stirring rod to make sure that you get any liquid that's left on the stirring rod as well. So you can see the stirring rod's in there as well, just to make sure we get anything off that. And when you're pouring the liquid, you have to be very careful that you don't take it over the top of the filter paper because then some of the charcoal might come through as well. So you can see we're getting a colourless liquid dripping down there. I'm just going to fast forward a bit more. As you can see now, it's finished dripping and we have our colourless solution in the conical flask. So what we're going to do now is pour that colourless solution into an evaporating dish, which is set up over a Bunsen burner. And we're going to heat it until the water is boiling. So we're carefully lighting our Bunsen burner and we're heating the solution. We want it to boil so that the water evaporates off. Now this could be done by setting it on the side, but it would take several days, if not longer, for this amount of water to evaporate off without added heat. So we're heating, so it can be done within the space of a lesson. As you can see, it's starting to boil now. Again, you need to be careful that it doesn't boil over shouldn't do we should be safe here but it is something to keep in mind so skip ahead a bit more you can see a lot of the water's gone and you're starting to see some salt crystals form so the rest of it boils away
and we start to see more salt crystals forming where the water has evaporated. There's now very little water actually left in there, boiling off. A lot more salt crystals forming now. Now one way if you wanted larger salt crystals, what you could do is leave it until you have half the water left then set it aside to evaporate the rest of the way. If you were to do this cells in this step, you'd need to be careful because as it fully dries, some of the crystals might pop out. But as you can see here, you have lots of nice crystals of the salt which have been extracted without the contamination of universal indicator. Okay, so now pause the video, go back and rewind if you need to, fill in all six stages using the cut and paste, describing what was done and what is hap explaining what is happening. Okay, so we've got the first one now. Hopefully you have all this stuck in. So you can see universal indicators being added to 10 centimetres cubed of hydrochloric acid. So my step was 10 centimetre cubed of hydrochloric acid is measured out accurately and added to a beaker. Universal indicator is added, which turns red because it has been added to an acid. Now, if you really wanted to, you could put a strong acid and the relevant pH. That would be an even better answer than what I've got. Next, you can see the sodium hydroxide being slowly added to the acid and indicator. So with these as we go through, you don't need to match mine word for word. Remember, it's just as long as you have the key points and any corrections in a different coloured pen. Sodium hydroxide is, add, is slowly added to the mixture of hydrochloric acid and universal indicator. Between additions of a few drops, the beaker is swirled to make sure it is mixing. It is added in small amounts each time to make sure it does not go past neutralisation. As soon as the solution turns green, no more sodium hydroxide is added. This is because the solution is now neutral. So I mean you need to explain what is happening at each step as well as describing. Step three is this image. So we've got a neutralised solution, which was green. And the black bits are your activated charcoal. So my step, activated charcoal is added to the neutralised solution. This is added to remove the colour, in brackets, the universal indicator. Now, if you're listening closely and put a more detailed answer saying it binds the universal indicator, stripping it out of solution, that's even better. And if you have fully labelled everything in the diagram, again, even better. Continuing on, the mixture is heated carefully over a Bunsen burner with occasional stirring. And care is taken to make sure it does not boil over. The, the solution needs to boil gently in a controlled way. And you may have also added here why it needs to be gentle boiling. Next was this diagram. So we've got the charcoal residue staying collected in the filter paper, a conical flask, and water and salt colourless as the solution in the flask. So I've put the beaker is removed from the heat and allowed to cool. The solution is then filtered through filter paper to remove the charcoal residue. A colourless solution collects in the conical flask, which contains water and salt. The universal indicator will remain with the charcoal residue, which is why the solution is colourless. That is an important point to have in here. Next, salt crystals in water in their evaporating dish. The streams coming off are evaporating water. I've put it over here rather than next to the arrow, just so it's easy to see. And then I've got heat on a blue flame. You may have labelled this as the tripod because that is depending on how you saw it. So I've got the colourless solution is poured into an evaporating dish. The evaporating dish is placed on gauze on a tripod above a Bunsen burner. The evaporating dish is heated on a blue flame to get the water to boil. 
The water boils and evaporates, leaving the salt crystals behind. Now you may have put in even more detail here about how the water is changing from liquid to gas as it evaporates. The last one, you've got your salt crystals and your evaporating dish. So once the water is evaporated, the evaporating dish is removed from the heat to cool. This is done with tongs to avoid getting burned. Pure salt crystals are left behind in the evaporating dish. And you could weigh the amount by weighing the evaporating dish before and after. Then you could get the amount, the weight of salt or mass even of salt crystals you've collected. Okay, so hopefully you've got all that on. So we're going to move on. As I said before, alkaline acid gives you salt and water. So we're going to learn some of the naming conventions of the salts. So I'm going to go through this example with you. So first, it's the word equation. But hydrochloric acid with sodium hydroxide gives you water and sodium chloride. We've then got the symbols here that we need to match up. So hydrochloric acid is HCl, capital H, capital C, little l, for hydrogen and chlorine. Sodium hydroxide is NaOH, capital N, little a, for sodium, capital O for oxygen, capital H for hydrogen. Water is H2O, so that's two hydrogens for the capital H, one oxygen. Sodium chloride is capital N, little a, for sodium, capital C, little l, for chlorine. You can see all the letters we've got over here, we also have over here. Very important. Now, different acids give different names to their salts, and there's some rules for this. Hydrochloric acid will always give you a salt that's called a chloride. Nitric acid always produces salts that are nitrates. Sulfuric acid always produces salts that are sulfates. And you have this information in your booklets. So what you're going to do is you are going to write finish all of these word equations. We're going to go through the first two together and then you're going to have a go yourselves. So I've got potassium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. Now we know that these neutralization reactions give us water so we can fill that one in first. Now when naming the salt the first line is the metal from the alkali. The second line is dependent on what acid is used. So the metal we've got is potassium, and we've got hydrochloric acid, so we get potassium chloride following this naming rule, and the metal on the left here. So the second one, we've got potassium hydroxide plus nitric acid. Again, we've got water, that's always the case. Potassium is our metal, so that's going to go on the top again. We've got nitric acid as the acid, so if we look at our rule, always produces nitrate, so it's potassium nitrate. So have a go at the rest yourselves. Pause the video and have a go. Okay, hopefully you've got answers for all of these. As we go through, if you make any corrections, remember it's in your different coloured pen. So potassium hydroxide and sulfuric acid. What I've done is I've put water in all of them first because I know they all get give water. Now I'm going to go through and name the salts. So we've got potassium, which will go on the front, on the top line. Sulfuric acid, my rule said it gives me sulfates, so it's potass potassium sulfate. Next one, this time we've got hydrochloric acid again, so we know we're going to get a chloride. But instead of potassium, we've got sodium, so it's sodium chloride. And if you're keen-eyed, you'll have realised this was also on the page before. So we've got sodium here. Nitric acid. Nitric acid gives me a nitrate, so it's sodium nitrate. Sodium hydroxide again, but sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid gives me a sulfate, so it's sodium sulfate. Now this time we've not got a metal, but the same rule applies. It's the first part of the name on the alkali. For the top line, so ammonium. And the second line is dictated by the acid. Hydrochloric acid. So it's a chloride, 
So we get ammonium chloride. Ammonium hydroxide again, so we're going to have ammonium on the top. Nitric acid, so it's a nitrate. Again, ammonium hydroxide, but sulfuric acid, so it's ammonium sulfate. Now hopefully you got most of these correct. Remember, if you do have any questions, do just ask your teacher. Now, this week, I need you to have a go at homework four, acids and alkalis. You've got it as a crossword here. All the questions I've put on a quiz on your study zone. You can then write the answers in here on your crossword if you want. But the main place for the homework is on the study zone. And I'll show you what it looks like now. So it's homework four. I'll just remember mine always looks a bit different. So what you've got is you've got the questions or statements and a drop down box. So all you need to do is select the answer you think it is and then move on to the next one. Like before, at the bottom you have a check button. When you do that, it will tell you how many you've got correct and keep the correct answers in their place to give you a chance to fill in the rest. You get at least three tries of this. When you're finished, you hit finish attempt. My internet is being slow now. And then you submit all and finish when you are ready. And this needs to be done before your next timetabled lesson. Okay. And before you finish this lesson, you need to do today's self-marking quiz labeled lesson six plenary quiz, which will be under this lesson to show yourself and your teacher the progress you're making and make sure that you have understood today's lesson. Remember to add any new keywords to the table at the front of your booklet. For example, neutralization is quite an important word. So thank you for today, Year 8, and I will see you again for our next lesson.